Microsoft is making AI that will kill you. Hi everyone, I'm Jack and welcome to Inside Gaming Rounds Up Live. That's right, Microsoft is looking to develop video games using AI, which ultimately then will also try to kill you, but in a video game. So oh, okay. yeah, don't worry about it, don't worry about like, it too really much. Not. On Monday, Microsoft announced that they were partnering with the artificial intelligence company no, in good. World AI to make tools that game developers can use to bring AI based characters to life. Hyun Zhang, general manager of gaming AI at Xbox, said, quote, at Xbox, we believe that with better tools, creators can make even more extraordinary games. Today, we are announcing a multi-year partnership with in-world AI, an M12 portfolio company to build AI game dialogue and narrative tools at scale. They went on to say, quote, together we aim to deliver an accessible, responsibly designed multi-platform AI tool set to assist and empower creators in dialogue, story, and quest design. The tool set will include an AI design co-pilot that assists and empowers game designers to explore more creative ideas, turning prompts into detailed scripts, dialogue trees, quests, and more, and an AI character runtime engine that can be integrated into, game, into the game client, enabling entirely new narratives with dynamically generated stories, quests, and dialogue dialogue for players to experience all sounds great right right and well not everyone is super happy about it uh, at the better mask who is responsible for the game thirsty suitors which i think bk actually loved responded to the story on twitter saying quote love to have an ai co-pilot who steals my work and devalues my labor also corporate can make more money and keep me precarious uh, they went on to say, we want decent paid job security, a flourishing indie marketplace with discovery and funding, not controlled by a tiny group of tastemakers, not AI and creative. Literally one of the few jobs humans enjoy doing is making stuff up. It's actually sinister to replace us with machines. So we've <laughs> talked about it on, on Roundup before, but AI has been used in gaming for decades. Mm -hmm. Like literally AI has been used in gaming forever. If you ever use like a procedurally generated worlds, that's AI. That's something making it for you is creating stuff for you. But now we're, we're slipping into this realm of AI doing creative mm -hmm. things, like coming up with dialogue, actually performing, making images. And this, this is where it starts to get sticky and, and people are getting nervous. Kotaku was a bit uneasy about it. They wrote, quote, Despite no major game shipping with the tools, backers are already valuing the startup at $700 million. In-World AI has mostly been used for mods so far, with players experimenting with the tools in games like Stardew Valley and Skyrim. A Grand Theft Auto V mod was mysteriously nuked from the internet earlier this year by publisher Take-Two, seemingly over its over for its inclusion of NPCs using in-world AI's tech. Microsoft seems less worried about the potential creative and legal minefield for companies shipping entire games using the tools. So uh, yeah, there was a GTA 5 mod they put out that like created new stories like on the fly. Oh. And it felt very hollow, I'll be honest. Like I watched like, it and it was- no heart in it? Yeah, or, I mean, there okay. was there was like dialogue, but it was, it was like a, an AI created dialogue and it was like speaking to you and it sounded very, there was like, there's no emotion or wrong emotion. It, it was very strange. And obviously it's still, we're still relatively new in sort of this, this realm of AI stuff. Uh, but I mean, what do you, what do you guys think? Chat, what do you guys think? We knew this stuff, stuff was coming, but does it signal the end of gaming developers in end. general? <laughs> Are we going to start seeing a ton of like cookie cutter titles using this kind of technology? Like remember when, um, like RPG maker came out and suddenly everything looked like RPG maker. Yeah. Are, are people going to use these tools and make the same thing over and over again? Uh, I, for one, welcome our new AI overlords and look forward to the utopia they create. Please you're, don't kill me. No, yeah, you're saying that so you can get your uh, <laughs> ass covered. Please don't kill me, AI overlords. We're going to fight back the AI, Jack. Okay? I, I guess so. I mean, it, it's this it's a weird debate, man, because it's one of those things where I get both sides of it. You know, I get it. It's like, you know, developers are using these as tools and it's like that's the correct way it should be done. But also if you're replacing some a human that could be doing this, that sucks. But if you're someone who's like an independent developer who doesn't have the the resources to have someone write 20,000 lines of dialogue and then have someone else voice it. I mean, is it OK to use the AI tools to to you to use what you have at your disposal to make the stuff you have like maybe you've got bigger dreams i'm very interested in seeing the future of what's going to happen because it's yeah. it's speeding up very quickly yeah it's definitely going to be a battle but speaking of a battle hey. let's talk about fortnite hey. was that good look at you with the segue <laughs> Woo! Look did at that big blizz uh so we're going to talk about fortnite actually in two different stories here we're going to talk about Fortnite's success with bringing back og seasons oh, yeah. and also fortnite suing google uh-oh. 
Yeah, there's tea there. And I'm going to talk about legal jargon and Let all the lawsuit fight. stuff that you need. Um, but let's talk about Fortnite OG. So the six-year-old Battle Royale has officially broken its all-time one-day player record, all because they all decided to go back in time to Chapter 1, aka Season 1 of the whatever Fortnite Yeah, yeah, the, like very, the very first one. Uh, my, my buddy Laserbeam streamed, and he pulled in like 80,000 concurrence playing it, like just because it's classic Fortnite. People it love it. It is classic Fortnite, and, and they're coming out, or the skins that are in the classic Fortnite look so cool. I just want to spend all my monies, but I'm not going to do it. But... They definitely done a record, and that's right. Fortnite has gone back in time and drew in 44 point million players on Saturday, November 4th, which racked up 102 million hours of play collectively wow. through those players. Um, and it was a concurrent of 6.2 million people playing. So what brings folks back, obviously, nostalgia. Um, I personally remember dropping down with the boys Where in we Tilted dropping, Towers boys? Going to Tilted. and causing chaos or dying immediately because it was a hot spot. Uh, but Fortnite plans on speed running through the seasons uh, or one to two seasons per week. Oh, uh, wow. For example, season six is going to be coming out in two days. So reliving that season six. And November 9th is when season nine will, sorry, not November 9th, November 23rd is when season nine will start showing up again. So uh, please bring back bows. I love bows. I was goaded with a bow. But um, yeah, just an sorry. example, one of the gaming experts from Electronic Playground, uh, Lucas said, Fortnite has exceeded all expectations. It's become this enormous juggernaut. Um, Fortnite OG will fuel a lot of business plans and a lot of game designers and game directors at studios coming back saying, uh, and saying with this anecdotal evidence, I don't want to say anecdotal. Anecdotal. Ane anecdotal evidence. There you go. We need to go back and revisit this era of our IP's existence, and we think players would love to jump back in there, which it, is true. That just that proved it. It's 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 rose colored glasses, man. Like people remember, like the the first time people jumped into something is the best that'll ever be for them. Yeah, one hundred percent. So people like, oh, we'll give you we'll give you something that you remember. Like here we go, let's go back to the classic, and it works, man. It works. Yeah. People eat nostalgia up. And these numbers are like pretty big, um, especially since Fortnite is not available on iOS since the incident. Back in the summer of 2020, uh, let's travel back three years ago, I'm 24. Uh, Epic revolted against demands from Apple and Google for a cut of in-app purchases so users could pay Epic directly. This caused Apple and Google to boot the game from their stores immediately for violating those terms. Uh, Epic sued both companies for violating Sherman's Antitrust Act, which in the short version, it's an act to protect trade and commerce against unlawful restraints and monopolies. Mm. So you're getting law, law jargon today. Uh, the Apple case happened quickly and a judge ruled in 2021 that Epic failed to prove that Apple was being in an illegal monopolist. But they did order Apple to open its Apple stores uh, so app devs could steer customers to alternative payment systems. So it was kind of a win, but not necessarily a win. They're planning on um, doing this to Google. So like, this is why you're hearing it now, even though they, in the beginning, in 2020, they were going after Apple and Google Play. Mm. Um, now they're going after Google. Oh, and okay. a lot of law officials think that it's not, the outcome isn't going to be good. But if it is good, then it means favorable terms for uh, the developers of Android apps. Uh, but Epic is also going into the trial alone after many of its plaintiffs, plaintiffs left. Mm. So they also had Tinder and Hinge. Uh, but apparently there was a settlement and Google agreed for its users to make in-app purchases through other payments. And Tinder and Hinge was like, oh, that's fine. Oh, yeah, right. we're, we'll are we back out. So Fortnite has no leg to really stand on right uh, now unless they have their own legs to stand on. Um, but yeah, Google contests these allegations from Epic uh, that they kind of ate with this. They're contesting that they're not a monopoly because Google Play's rival is Apple App Store, which, yeah, true. Um, and also their in-app purchases are a legitimate business practice or getting revenue for in-app purchases or yeah. legitimate business practices. So I don't know, Chad, it's going to be up to you. Let me know what you think. Do you think Epic has a chance and if they're valid at tackling this 
a legal monopoly. But uh, yeah, that's going to do it for our, <laughs> our stories this week. This episode of Inside Gaming Roundup Live is brought to you by Shopify. We all know running a business can be difficult. There are so many moving parts and things to consider at one time that it can be very overwhelming. Shopify is here to make things a little bit easier. My wife, Katie, she has an awesome candle company, Katie's Candles. She's been using Shopify for well over a year now, and she speaks nothing but great things. When we were at RTX this year selling things, it was super easy to use their app and to sell stuff right there. It was like it was it was the easiest thing. And I highly, highly recommend it if you're gonna make a shop of your own you Shopify. Shopify is the commerce platform revolutionizing millions of businesses worldwide. Whether you're a garage entrepreneur or IPO ready, Shopify is the only tool you need to start, run, and grow your business without the struggle. It puts you in control of every sales channel. So whether you're selling in person or online, Shopify has you covered. In fact, Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the US, which is huge. That is massive and Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success in every step of the way. Here's what I want you to do. So sign up now for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash inside gaming, all lowercase. Again, go to shopify.com slash inside gaming, all lowercase to take your business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash inside gaming. Why don't we tell you about a couple games that are coming out in the next couple of days, starting with Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2 brings you the biggest and best fighting character roster yet. There's Garfield, April O'Neil, Jimmy Neutron, SpongeBob, the El list Tigre? goes on El Tigre. And they're all going to beat the crap out of each other for your entertainment. Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl hits the PS5, Xbox Series X and S, PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC today. Go play it. Up next, the sequel to the 2016 Souls-like game Salt and Sanctuary, Salt and Sacrifice, has you joining your fellow marked inquisitors in an online co-op adventure. Beyond Sanctuary, a realm of elemental pandemonium awaits. Salt and Sacrifice hits the Switch today. It's already available on the PS4, PS5, and PC, so go check that one out. And last but not least, the coming out tomorrow, Risk of Rain is back, and it's better than ever. Carefully designed, beautifully remastered, and loaded with new ways to play, you can dive into the iconic roguelike, full of unique loot combinations, enhanced with new survivors, overhauled multiplayer, and more. Risk of Rain Returns hits the Switch and PC tomorrow. We'll have a bunch more games on Thursday. Don't forget, if you like Roundup Live, you can make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash inside gaming. We also stream live every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at twitch.tv slash rooster teeth. And if you want to hear this, you can listen to it on anywhere you get your podcast, Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you want to do that. You can listen to us on your podcast networks. And one last thing, this weekend on November 11th, we are participating in Extra Life. Inside Gaming will be there bright and early and also very, very late as well. We're kicking off Extra Life, Rooster Teeth's Extra Life stream. It's our 11th stream starting at 10 a.m. on November 11th. You can find that at twitch.tv slash Rooster Teeth, youtube.com slash Rooster Teeth, and also RTTV over on Rooster Teeth's site. So go check it out raise some money for the kids go to donate.roosterteeth.com if you want to make a donation and we love you have a great day we'll see what i just let you go and cook and then you just cook perfectly <laughs> this is what i do i've been doing I, this for a I long know. time man. every time i'm just like this man is going As I, I i know i've got bullet points in my head i'm good at yeah this stuff. you're you're good man. that's it well you say goodbye to everyone then you, you give us the outro see ya